Today is the 18th of the month of Sha'ban. And we all know the next month will be the month of Ramadan. And Alhamdulillah, Muslims across the world have started preparing for the month of Ramadan. And as we should do, when we have a holiday or something, we start preparing for the holiday months ahead. So why shouldn't we prepare for the month of Ramadan before the month of Ramadan appears and approaches to us? We find in the history of pious predecessors, Salaf e Salihin, that they used to even prepare for the month of Ramadan six months prior to Ramadan. And after Ramadan, they would spend another six months just doing istighfar and tawbah. The, a, a blessed month came to our life, but we couldn't appreciate that month. We couldn't do the righteous deed that we were supposed to do. So as tawbah and istighfar, they would do tawbah and istighfar for the remaining six months. This is how they used to appreciate the month of Ramadan. My brothers in Islam, now Ramadan comes to our life and goes. We don't even pay any attention. It doesn't help us to improve our inner condition, our spiritual development. We cannot uplift our spiritual well-being and spiritual status in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's all try to appreciate and let's all try to prepare for this month, the Ramadan that is coming to, our, to us. And there are multiple ways, there are several ways that we can prepare for the month of Ramadan. I would today mention a few of them that we should make a note of these things so that when Ramadan comes, we don't miss them. Obviously, we all know Ramadan is the month of fasting. So we will be fasting. Fasting is an obligation. Quran reads in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam, kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. Quran says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam. O the believers, siyam, fasting has been prescribed on you. Kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum, the way fasting was prescribed upon the previous nations. Maybe in a different way. Not necessarily the way we are fasting, they used to fast in the same way. There were different methods of fasting, but they also maintain in all the religious, uh, like in all the divine messages, in all the divine books, there was a prescription and an obligation of fasting upon the followers. So, Muslim Ummah, we have that as well, fasting. However, what's the benefit of fasting then? Why should we fast? Quran says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you can become righteous. You can become God-fearing. And this is what we need, my brothers. Today, we have everything, mashallah. The outside is very nice. And everything is very neat and clean and uh, appealing. But inside is getting destroyed. People have all the means of happiness. They have food. They have house. They have everything that to be happy with. Still, they are not happy. There is no happiness anymore. My brothers in Islam, if you look at the suicide rate in the, in the Western countries and then compare it with the poor countries, you'll be shocked. People, the rate of suicide that people are committing in the West, this rate is greater, is higher than those poor countries. So if the people are so happy and if they, all, if they have all the means of happiness in the West, all the development, technology and everything, why would they commit suicide? A person only commits suicide when they feel there is no meaning of life. Then they commit suicide. That means the West people have everything, mashallah. Money and a car and house and whatever they need, they all, all things are there. But still they are missing something. And whatever they are missing is called itmi'inan. It's called sakina and sukuna. If we look at the Quran, then Quran tells us, Ala bidhikrillahi tatma'innul qulub. Only through the dhikr of Allah, only through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hearts can find peace. 
and tranquility. So because we are away from the remembrance of Allah, now despite how many uh, materials we are owning, how many materials we have, that doesn't matter. Because the main thing, the Allah is missing, so therefore we don't have any peace anymore. People are committing suicide. People are getting addicted to the drugs, alcohol, wine. They think, okay, if I uh, consume drugs, perhaps that will make me happy for some time. But these people try to, uh, they, these people forget that these drugs and these addictions are destroying them, destroying their life, causing destruction to the humanity, to the community. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, Al-Khamr, Jumma'ul Ithm. Alcohol, wine is the essence of all the sins. So a person who is, when they are addicted to wine, that means it is easy for them to commit any sort of sin. Could, could it be zina, adultery? Could it be saraqa, uh, stealing and kidnapping and all the other all sort of uh, evil crimes and activities? So my brothers, Ramadan comes to us so that we can train ourselves to become muttaqi. To, so that we can have taqwa, we can have God consciousness, we can abide by the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can abstain and refrain ourselves from all the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so then we can see and feel the real and the true meaning of life. Otherwise, as I said, people are committing suicide because they think there is no meaning of life anymore. My brothers in Islam, in order to focus on that concept of taqwa in Ramadan, in fast, during fasting, we find a hadith elaborating and explaining that point a bit farther. The hadith is recorded in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim on the authority of Sahabi Abu Huraira radiyallahu an. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man lam yada' qawla zur wal amala bihi wal jahla Man lam yada' qawla zur wal amala bihi والجهل فليس لله حاجة أن يدع طعامه وشرابه. The hadith reads that a person who does not give up, قول الزور, speaking lie, والعمل به, and acting according to lie, meaning wrong actions, wrong activities. A person who cannot give up these two, والجهل and as well as ignorance, acting like ignorant. So a person who cannot give up. These three bad characteristics and bad habits, Rasulullah says, فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need. Allah has no hajat, no darurat, no need in this person staying away from food and drink during the days of Ramadan. What's the point of staying away from food and drink if whilst food and drink is halal for you? Outside of Ramadan, food is halal, drink is halal. So what's the point of staying away from halal during the days of Ramadan whilst you are committing the sins? You are, you are speaking lies. You are acting like ignorant. And you are acting based on lies. So the hadith is trying to say that as you have stayed away from food, which you are supposed to do, as you have stayed away from drink during the days of Ramadan, similarly, likewise, you must stay away and keep yourself away from all sort of sins during the days of Ramadan. What's the point for a person, according to the hadith, they fast during the days, at the same time they are earning haram. They are consuming haram. They are, they are watching haram stuff during the days of Ramadan. They are, they are committing, they are lying to people in business, in their job, in whatever activities they do. My brothers, this Ramadan comes not to just make us be hungry during the days of Ramadan. Hunger is just a way, it's just a means to get to the, res uh, to the, to the conclusion, the result. <coughs> Staying hungry is not the result, it's not the conclusion. It's just a means to get to the result. And the result is to be muttaqi. That if you don't see, like, the muttaqi means like when you're driving, you know, even though the police is not here, but there is camera. The camera is watching me and recording me. So that's why you maintain your speed limit and everything. So taqwa is that. Taqwa is, you know, even Allah subhanahu, even though I cannot see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is observing and watching everything that I'm doing. So therefore my life should be 
in a limited, in a, uh, within the boundaries of the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, this is the taqwa that we should try to attain during the month of Ramadan. And for that, from now on, we should start preparing. During the month of Ramadan, and as part of preparation, is to read Quran. Let's try to read Quran and start reading from now on. It's very, really sad to mention, my brothers in Islam, that, mashallah, when it is required for me to learn a new language, we are ready to learn that language because I need to get a job. When it is required for me to get a new skill, to acquire a new skill, I'm ready to do that. I do course, six months course, one year course, and this and that. We are all ready to do that because I need money, I need job. So why about learning Quran? Why shouldn't we spend some time to learn the Quran? And obviously, when I say learning Quran, there are different levels. One level is just tilawa, just to learn how to recite the Quran. And the situation of the Quran requires us to learn the basic rules of tajweed, how to pronounce the letters correctly, and all this stuff. So this is the minimum level that all Muslims should learn, and we should be able to do that. The second level will be not just reciting the Qur'an, rather also trying to understand the Qur'an. And understanding also has different levels. For example, just reading the translation from a translation of the Qur'an. The next level will be to, uh, to acquire the knowledge of Arabic language, to be an expert in Arabic language, so that you can understand Arabic tafsir, ancient, early and primary sources of the commentary of the Qur'an. These are different levels, but at least as Muslims, why shouldn't we try to acquire the fast level? The, let me read the Quran correctly and also at the same time let me understand the Quran. Minimum, the surahs that we read very often, Surah Fatiha, Surah Naz, Surah Ikhlas, Surah Kawthar, Surah Al-Asr, these small surahs that we read, why shouldn't we try to understand the meaning and the message of Allah that He has passed on to us through these ayat and through these surahs? During the month of Ramadan, mashallah, nowadays we have lots of Islamic programs and TV, and TV channels. So what happened? I'm not saying TV channels are bad. We should, a person, if they have access and they, they understand, why not? But what I'm trying to say, these TV channels now have taken away from us the real practice of deen. In one sense, the other day one brother was telling me that his father, who works in a shop, he has his own business. So he's, he's telling me that before, when there was no TV channel or anything Islamic, so-called Islamic channels, before there was no channels, he used to come to home and he used to get Quran to read. He used to do some uh, nafal salah and everything. But because now he has TV, he comes home at night and he owns the TV. He says, okay, let me listen to some Islamic programs. I'm not saying listening to Islamic programs is bad, it's good. However, it has taken your portion of reciting Quran now. You are not reading Quran. You are not reading the kitab, the book that you are supposed to read. Tafsir of the Quran. We are not doing that. We are thinking, okay, everything, let's just be passive. Let that person a lecture and let me just listen. That's it. We are not ready to actually put this lesson or put these lectures in our own practice. So my, my brothers in Islam, let's try to uh, reconnect ourselves with the Quran. And I can guarantee in the house of Allah, in this blessed day, I can guarantee if you connect yourself with the Quran, you will find a diff you will find a different meaning of life, a different meaning of being Muslim. You will be more confident. And we find in Sahih Bukhari, right in the beginning of Sahih Bukhari, Sahabi Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma says, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ajwad nas Rasulullah sallam was most generous person. Wa kana ajwadu ma yakunu fi Ramadan hina yalqahu Jibreel. And Rasulullah would become even more generous during the, day, during the month of Ramadan, Hina yalqahu Jibreel, when Jibreel comes to meet him. And then Ibn Abbas tells us further, he says, وَكَانَ جِبْرِيلُ يَلْقَاهُ فِي كُلِّ لَيْلَةٍ مِّنْ رَمَضَانِ فَيُدَانِسُهُ الْقُرْآنِ And Jibreel would come to meet Rasulullah Sallam every night of Ramadan, for what purpose though? فَيُدَانِسُهُ الْقُرْآنِ For the purpose of studying Quran, مُدَارَسَةُ الْقُرْآنِ Reading and reciting Quran. In another version, of the same hadith, it reads that Jibril used to recite and they used to do mudakara, revision of the Quran, once a month. Like, like one, one revision throughout the month. So they would complete the Quran once throughout the whole month. 
the year on which in which Rasulullah left the world in that year they did that revision twice like they completed the Quran with revision twice in the same month so this is the month of Ramadan Quran when describes Ramadan my brothers in Islam go and you can find in Surah Al-Baqarah ayat 185 Quran doesn't say Shahru Ramadan Shahru Siyam Ramadan is the month of fasting Quran is not relating Ramadan to fasting. Rather, the Quran says, "Shahru Ramadan, alladhi umzila fihi al-Quran." Ramadan is the month on which Quran was revealed. Yes, you will be fasting, but there is something more beyond fasting, which is getting connected to the Quran. Obviously, the more can be said, but let me be very brief. The third point I wanted to mention in terms of preparation for uh, preparing for Ramadan is to be generous, to give in charity. What happens generally in our community, we think, okay, mashallah, Ramadan is coming, let, let's start saving, and when Ramadan comes, I'll start giving, which is a good thing. However, why should we wait until Ramadan comes? Rather, we should pay the zakat, we should give in charity before even Ramadan comes. My brothers, you'll be shopping, you'll be preparing things for your iftar and suhoor. Where about the poor people and needy people? Where are they, where, how are they going to prepare for Ramadan? How are they going to prepare suhoor and iftar for their children, for their family? So let's try to give that zakat and that charity before Ramadan, one week before Ramadan, two weeks before Ramadan. So they can also buy some stuff for the iftar, for the suhoor, for their children. They, will, they can also bring smile in their children's face and in their family's face. Yes, you give charity in Ramadan, that's more rewarding, now, no, no doubt. But let's also try to give something before Ramadan comes. And from this year, we should all try to make a firm resolution that we are going to recite Quran during the month of Ramadan. And also we should try to understand the Quran, even at least the surahs that we generally recite and repeat in our sur in our namaz, in our salawat, etc., etc. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us the ability and tawfiq to appreciate this holy month of Ramadan and to uplift, to be able to elevate and uplift our uh, spiritual status.